let's start by talking about priorities. Provided that you have enough EPSs or you have the unlimited uh, EPS model, uh, Curator will give top priority to the collection of the logs. Make sure that nothing is uh, lost. Then it will proceed with uh, parsing, mapping, correlation, and finally will give the least priority to searches. So if you are performing a search, the event processor, as his name implies, is going to be processing events, and then the time that he has available, it will give it to you for you to conduct your searches. So, and we'll see the implications of all these uh, uh, for, for, for searches that are slow because you have overwhelmed your hardware into with the other stages that have higher priority. So, one situation that can happen is that your after the collection goes, if the system doesn't have enough hardware resources, it can actually take this path and send those logs into store, but they will be stored because of performance reasons, not because of other parts and reasons that we will be seeing uh, later. How do you know about that? Well, there's a condition in uh, custom property in Curator. You can go here, let's say, if you look for store, uh, if you look here for store, you, you'll find uh, that property. And if you put it equals true, and you go back, you know, X number of days, you'll see whether you have uh, issues that the, the, the your logs are go, go straight into storage. They can be searched if there are cycles, but chances are that the whole thing is going to be very slow because you don't have enough hardware or you're sending too much telemetry or too much bad telemetry that is overwhelming the system. Uh, now, so it's going to be a good... Uh, by the way, if you have any one of those events on store for performance equals true and you... and I don't have any, but I will grab some of them and then what I'll do is I, I open them in, in the DSM editor and if they show parse and map, I, I, I know how to parse and map this. The problem is that I didn't have cycles to do so. Okay, so keep that in mind. So it's going to be a, a best practice that for the rest of this uh, session, we're going to be always adding the condition store for performance equals false. Right? In order to make sure that you don't get confused with things that are it was still doing the, the search for the last 30 days. Uh, so you, you want to make sure that you get store for performance equals false for all of your uh, subsequent searches for this uh, video. Of, co of course, you want to have all your logs being parsed correctly and you know that, that the information is actually uh, detected in here. That's uh, one of my uh, cameras. Uh, here at home, and I'm going to be using my PSNs uh, as an example of that. Uh, but if you open this one on the DSM editor, you this is what you want to see: parse and map. This is nice. I get you know all the right processing. And then my my offenses can fire on this, and life is actually good. But that's not always the case. We're going to go from bad to worse. The First condition is that you, you may have the high-level category being unknown as well as the low-level category, category unknown. Let's actually see one of those cases. So I go here, I'm going to add the, put the word here, category. It doesn't say high, but it's, uh, it's the high-level category in here. And I'm going to select unknown, go to the U, unknown. And the low-level category is also going to be unknown we apply that filter and we go back, uh, you know, a couple of days, we find some event. Let's actually take a look at this. If we open one of them, first we see that we have the capability of doing uh, the mapping of the event, right? And uh, more on that later. But you get this uh, green thing there. And if we open that event on the DSM editor, we're going to see, okay, is parse but not map. 
Also notice that you have an event category, an event ID, but there's no name for this particular event. This seems to be a problem with that event ID HTTPS. Actually, we'll see later that this is because my PSN supports DNS over HTTPS and the parser does not support that. How do I know that? Well, there is a website that if you Google device support module curator support the DSMs, you get to this page. And if I go here and look for PFSense, I go to that section and under the PFSense specifications, if I scroll down, These are the event types that I support. System, firewall, DNS, and DHCP when you use the Linux uh, parser. Now, what's what that means? Let's go back to our case. You have two options. One is to open a ticket with IBM and say, IBM, I need you to support this, right? The other you can do is that you can actually do the mapping yourself and I have done videos that show how to you do that on the DSM editor and all that stuff but those are the the paths that you have by the way if the parser that you are using is not supported by IBM this is the corresponding the corresponding uh, page for the parsers that are supported by other people that are not IBM and how you can uh, go into into the page and, and see what components are supported and, and so on and so forth, right? So in this particular case, high level category or non, low level category or non, we have that mapping event thing in green that we saw and we see in the DSM editor that it's not parsed with map. How can you fix it again? You can do the mapping manually or get IBM to support that. Uh, so, so this case is bad, but it's not really too bad, right? I would say that this is, let me put it in here, this is bad. But things can get worse than that. Let's actually see the next uh, example of that. I think it is appropriate to here talk about what, the, what a QID is. It's just a record. You're not going to get this in the logs, but it's a record that points to information and, and it needs to have at least an event ID, an event category. And with that, you have seen in the videos that I do on the DSM editor, you assign it a name. And when all those things are completed, then you have parsed. Let's go to our previous example because it's almost there. We have an event category, we have an event ID, but you wouldn't have a name. And the problem is that this event ID is HTTPS. It's not one of the ones that are supported uh, by the parser. And that's why this is not given a proper name, but it's given unknown. Let's move to the next case and for that one we are going to look for the high level category is going to be known as well but the low level category oops oops no known but the low level category is going to be store. Okay. We add that filter. Yeah, we're stopping the previous search. Let me actually look for one of the PFSense one. Let's take any one of these, right? If we open this one on the DSM editor, what we're going to be seeing is actually different because in here it doesn't say parse but not map. It actually says parse fail. And why is that? Well, we have a, an event category, but we don't have any event ID. So the, this, you need to fix this. Uh, again, uh, if, if this will be a valid uh, log, we let, well, what happened in this particular case is that this is a DHCP version 6 with the PFSense uh, parser does not support. And that's why you see that 6 in there. It supports DHCP, but not DHCP for IPv6. And that's what it, uh, it, it cannot be part. So if you wanted to fix this yourself, or if you don't want IBM, if you request IBM to do it, and IBM say, well, this is not a priority, or it's going to take long, whatever, you can go ahead and uh, 
do the the proper uh, and I'm, I'm not going to make this video longer but you see me fixing parsers or using the DSM editor but you need to make sure that you uh, get the 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 event ID and then you assign a name to that particular element. One word of caution before I forget, when you make modifications to a, an IBM supported parser or a third party supported parser and then you get an update, those updates are going to be erased. So make sure that you keep, if you are doing the regex and other stuff, make sure you make notes of that because if a new parser comes as part of the auto update, those changes will be lost. Also, notice that if we go to that event, we do not see the map event here. It's impossible because it doesn't have the, the capability of you doing the mapping from here. Things can get even worse with the loss called sim generic. Let's actually look for some of those. And there's no category that you can give to those so I'm going to clear this filter and to look for those I'm going to look here for by the name log source index I'm going to put here either generic or sim let me put the word generic sim generic right I'm going to add that I'm going to stop the previous search that I was doing and I have a couple of those let's take a look at one of these first of all obviously we don't even have the map event is is definitely is uh, unknown and seem generic uh, doesn't have a uh, high level category even unknown so if we try to open this event on the dsm editor well the dsm editor doesn't even have a log source associated with it, it has no clue i mean it says well okay how do you want me to open this with i, I don't even recognize what is it that this is all about and this can typically be uh, some source is sending logs into curator that are not appropriate right we can even open any one of those and see what is actually on the payload and you know the, this this is an error something is sending me this message that doesn't even have the format of a syslog format or any format that that curator can actually make sense of it Make sure that you don't get way too many of these because Curator will attempt to you know, will use some cycles to try to figure this out, right? So, so that is the the works worst case scenario. I mean, all those uh, uh, all that is mapped. There's no hope. I don't even have a log source to identify for it. Now, a couple additional points. I don't know if you notice or not but my pfSense box which has one address so, uh, it's it carries other protocols uh, like like DNS resolution like uh, DACP and some others right and you need to make sure that you have the right order for parsing those uh, those events so if you go here under this under the admin tab on the logs source of parsing order and you go here I'm gonna put the my uh, PF sense box is 192.168.2.1 right notice that I have PF sense that that's that's good but I have this web proxy which by the way I'm not using so I'm gonna be sending this uh, to the button I'm not particularly, I tried once before, but I'm not using right now Suricata, so I want to bring that to the button. Uh, force point, I'm not using through through here either. So Linux DHCP, I do like uh, Solaris DHCP, so th that's a more appropriate order in which I want the things to be uh, parsed. Because if you get, you, you may get auto discover to be confused by going into you know these particular things and map something that might be Linux as a or if you have this in a different order um, you may get an event to be mapped by the first attempt on the parses uh, rather than the appropriate one so make sure that you 
if you are having problems, particularly with auto discovery, that it doesn't understand or doesn't get the, the right identification of the logs, it could be this order a problem. By the way, if that happens, you know that you can always go into the DSM editor. Let me actually go there. I can select this uh, firewall deny. I'm going to open it with the DSM editor. And on the third tab of configuration, you have the option to disable auto detection. So if you have something that has been detected uh, wrong, my, one solution might be, well, you can delete that log source. If it's, let's say that is a uh, Solaris log that is coming, it was identified as a Linux one. Well, what you will do is that you will disable auto detection when the new logs, and you will add, uh, for example, the, the, the right one is this, uh, Linux or Solaris, and then you delete the, the one that was, well, that was auto discover. Auto discover works very well, but sometimes it doesn't quite get it, but it gives you the option to disable it from here.